Recording in progress.
Muy buenos días a todas las personas que Good nos morning, acompañan. everyone who's here with us today, February the 7th, and the 43rd uh, session on the Permanent Seminar of Welfare in the Americas from the uh, Inter-American Conference of uh, Social Security. For those that are with us remotely from uh, Zoom, we will gladly tell you that there is uh, an icon of a world where you will be able to find or choose the language you would like to hear this. It can be either Portuguese, English, or Spanish. Well then, now, now after the welcome, Thank you very much for being here, those that are here on site. And uh, well, in this seminar, which is called the evolution of the study of mortality, we have three great uh, speakers, Juan Carlos Contreras from the ISC, ISCC, and then our expert, Jorge Rendon. I will give the floor to our beloved uh, uh, Secretary General, to give us a welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Well, may you all be welcome to this, your house, the Inter-American Conference on Social Security. I just, uh, you know, for the, uh, in order to have this 43rd session of the permanent uh, seminar of welfare in the americas where we will talk about the evolution of mortality studies of mortality where we have had an increase in mortality in worldwide due to the covid 19 pandemic i will gladly greet the people that are with us all over america especially professor luis alberto martinez President of uh, the Mexican Conference uh, of Actuary from the uh, ISCC, I, CSS, you know, especially from uh, those that are here with us, particularly greet uh, Professor Jorge Rendon Elizondo and the uh, actuary in Mexico that has uh, trained uh, hundreds of generations and actuaries in Mexico and in the Americas in institutions like UNAM and the Autonomous uh, Technological Institute, ITAM, where he studied for more than 20 years. And, you know, for more than 10 years, Dr. Rendon has been with us in this conference as a teacher in training activities in El Salvador, Costa Rica, and of course, our place in Mexico City. Please be welcome, Rendon. Thank you very much for him here, here worlds. As uh, the invite of this seminar says, mortality is one of the demographic phenomena which are basic to determine the structure by age of the population in, in every society. Each and every one of these phenomena are studied uh, differently because due to several regions, uh, reasons, uh, their reasons are, are different. In the case of mortality, we may identify violence, like social uh, factors or biologic, like morbidity, like especially COVID pandemic changed uh, the mortality rates and morbidity rates. So there was a change in the life expectancy of people, you know, but to this point we could ask, how did we get to this conclusion? And uh, apparently so, accurately as our expert will tell us the mortality uh, chart is one of the instruments to for the study of this demographic uh, phenomenon uh, building it is not easy so uh, through history we have had different models to explain uh, the mortality by ages uh, through methodologies when it is possible to calculate the expectancy of life uh, on the present uh, value of the probable future payments of a pension. Uh, I will not give further details on how and when, because here we have the expert for this. But I want to say that development of this seminar is uh, due to the uh, request of the people representing the institutions that are part of the members of the uh, CIS have made us uh, had this uh, uh, petitions with uh, the five subregions and the six uh, American commissions of social security 
which have expressed us the needs to be able to know how they suggest to be adjusted the hy demographic hypothesis in the actuarial studies due to the COVID pandemic. The seminar is the first step to address those needs, and it's also an invite to gather to us. And then the Heather, Vanessa, who's uh, all nowadays, we have worked with institutions from all the countries in the region. And of course, if we allow us, you allow us, we will continue working with this and uh, giving you assistance in the actuary on social security. I repeat our thankfulness for your participation. We will, we're glad to share this uh, important space of reflection. Thank you very much. Now, thank you very much, Secretary, for your warm welcome and the people that are with us all over the continent and other places. As it was well said, we have now Professor Jorge Rendon Elizondo and the second actuary uh, from, the, from the science faculty of the UNAM, where he, he gave several lectures from... Uh, uh, 1961 and uh, 1976. He is member of ITAM, uh, where he was the uh, director of actuary uh, faculty until 2015. In 2010, the institute gave him the recognition of the institutional merit. He's a founding member of the uh, National uh, College of Actuaries, Actuaries has been the chair and member of the honor uh, a committee, among other uh, uh, positions. From 1961 to 1983, he was responsible for the actual uh, function in uh, several insurance companies. From 1983 to 1985, he was the commissioner for the government of Mexico for insurance companies. And in 1994, he was an external auditor of several insurance companies. He has helped for the development of uh, mortality charts and he has published several works on the topic in different institutions. The Mexican uh, Association of Insurance uh, Society, Society of Actuaries, and the International Association of Actuaries, who is an active member now. By the same token, he has uh, written books like uh, uh, Regulations and Policies of uh, Life Insurance. Professor Rendon, thank you very much for being here with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I didn't actually remember so many things I have done. Well, well, we may start um, we can uh, straight st uh, start with the uh, next uh, slide. There we have it. Well, this is a very brief uh, summary of why uh, these mortality uh, charts are important, which was, was uh, something that uh, was uh, mentioned a little while ago, despite the fact that uh, Mr. Belarca has already mentioned clearly that it is uh, this mortality chart is paramount. I'm going to repeat a little bit. Well done. Uh, for the social security and insurance companies, mortality uh, charts are the way to predict which are going to be the future expenses and the costs uh, of um, uh, death, uh, deaths, uh, and pensions uh, due to elderly ages. So it's uh, the the a mortality chart is the only way we will be able to acknowledge this. And another important thing of a mortality chart is that's the only way to determine the life expectancy by age and gender. 
represented by the different countries and states as, as an indicator. It's a world indicator of welfare of populations. It's one of the indicators, of course, uh, welfare of populations showing also the impact of the pandemic and catastrophes, uh, weather catastrophes. This is a little summary of what a mortality chart is and the importance of uh, uh, charts. Mortality charts are were developed more or less in this order. Initial studies and analytic formulas Pipiano 40 years before uh, Christ. And it is uh, and by the year uh, 1700 and bumpers in 1825. We'll see greater detail and what we'll see what they did. Uh, antique charts, mortality charts uh, from 1900 to 1980 included several columns like the living people, deaths, and probability, probabilities, and the strength of mortality to rate charts like the American experience, like where that in Mexico was uh, for a long time, the Mexican chart, which was the very first chart in Latin America. And 62, 68, CCO41 from the United States. You know, in the United States, they've been very active in creating all these charts. The charts, including only QX recharge and graduated, like the Commission of Insurances, Insurance Companies, and CSO, Commissionary Study or Standard Ordinary of the United States from 1980. Those charts that are not reloaded and are only interpolated because they're reloaded because it's a way to warranty a better reserve uh, adequately constituted because they have a margin of reload. Even though it's not used anymore because the image of a recharge is... Uh, yeah, calculated differently. Those that are not recharged, uh, like only like a BBT, basic valuation table of, from uh, 2011 to 2015, the chart of Canada, the AMES charts 2005, 2015, which I participated a little bit on this, includes mortality by antiquity as well as selected chart not only by age, by anti antiquity, by uh, policy and gender. In modern tables are also by gender, and it's uh, rare to see a mortality uh, uh, chart with, uh, with uh, that does not separate men and women. So let's continue. Uh, this is the Eupianus uh, chart. This chart was uh, created in the year 40 before Christ. And it was a very interesting chart because it said that when uh, Roman soldiers died, they would tell their family members how long they were going to receive their pension. Or, you know, feed their, their lives. And, uh, of course, when they died uh, older, they would give uh, less time their payment. And it was a way to measure life expectancy from the Roman Empire uh, times. So that's a very curious piece of information. Then we have uh, this other charge. Yeah, I'm going a little bit, uh, a little bit fast because they're only background to what we're going to see. So, the astronomer Edmund Halley in 1742 was pretty interesting. What Halley, Halley do did because uh, by then we had a comet uh, reaching the Earth, and the uh, European people were very afraid that it would hit the, uh, the planet, the, the comet would hit the planet. But Halley, or Halley, uh, traced the road of the comet, so people went a little bit calmer. So this figure you see is a presentation 
of uh, Haley's Haley's uh, Raven went Mr. Abadi like to you know as uh, one of the important uh, people in England. So it has several uh, tails or, or ribbons. You know, it's the center that tries to be the comment. The center is the comment, and there are several ribbons there coming from there, which Haley did. But the important thing he did for the country, to me, the most important thing he did is that he he sponsored he sponsored uh, Newton's work. Newton was uh, stocked and the uh, integral and differential calculation for the, first, for the very first time in history, together with a, a German person that was also doing that. And he, there was no way for him to publish his discoveries because not even the Mathematicians Association of England had money to do so. So Halley... Since he was an actor, he had a little bit more money. So he sponsored Newton in order for him to uh, publish his discoveries. Still, here one of uh, this lines in the bottom, he established the actuary foundations. It says here. And uh, yeah, he uh, went to a city which was called Pridlow, uh, where he started studying uh, the deaths uh, and the exposed uh, ones. And he was the first one that uh, mentioned some notes, some remarks that are used up to now, such as the living ones, LX, the death, the X, the death uh, probabilities, which is QX, and I think that is it. Then that's how the father of actuary and the mortality charts worked. So let's go on. There we have it. Well, uh, later in 1825, actuary and mathematician bumpers, he had a theory, an interesting one. He said that people at, in every moment are losing strength in order to stop their deterioration and death. So, he said that, and he also said that probably there would exist a possibility so that regardless of your age, there would be different deaths because it was supposed, he was supposed to talk about the mortal uh, accidents. So Goppers, as well as Mayhem, tried it to, you know, with the mathematical formulations follow the mortality curve by ages. So Gumper under that, uh, or based on that, concluded that the force of mortality, that is to say, instant mortality, yearly mortality force, it's uh, equal to a B constant of plus a C constant elevated to the X. And that was back in 1825. Nevertheless, Gompers, despite he said so, he didn't do anything uh, to set in his formula this part of accidents, which are independent of ages. So then we had Mayhem 35 years later. They are Scottish actuaries. So Maine came 35 years later, and he had another constant to the calculation. And constant, a constant A 
to deal with accidents and it we had a better church then so several charts have been have been adjusted like this in the past not now because it is impossible that a mathematical a ma mathematics uh, formula may follow all the trends of the charts mortal charts have curves from 20 even though they may work with uh, some years of mortality. Actually, Gompers has been widely used to see how much you can prolong life after 100 or 150 years, whatever it is, you know. And um, then um, these were two precursors. Uh, and uh, we find that in 1837, the standard annuity table uh, chart for pensions was adjusted with the Gumpers Law. And Mayhem's uh, also in 1941, CZO 41, Commissioner Standard Ordinary, and in Mexico, the Mexican experience 6267, a mortality uh, chart of... Uh, Experience in Mexico, 6267, it has to have a special place, not because I did it, but because it's important. You know, it's the first mortality chart in Latin America calculated with experience of uh, from uh, insurance companies. Actually, we had another chart. That's the truth of the matter. In Colombia, there was a mortality chart, which was previous to this, but we never knew how it was made there was a uh, german actor in colombia and probably she simply derived it from the german the mortality chart so this chart uh, was enforced until 1992 from uh, 62 to 92 68 to 92 and it was the base to have the future charts or other charts that were prepared in Mexico. This chart does not separate genders. It's reloaded in the mortality chart, which is greater than the greatest uh, insurance company. So we always try to have it uh, uh, higher than those. We had uh, this type A, which was like giving softness to the chart because there were not very many elements in 1968. They calculated 650,000 exposed ones. And the work, the detailed work of the chart was published and the memoirs of the Congress of Actors in the anthology of some relevant works of the National College of Actors in uh, 1969. It's a little graph. And in Mexico, what we used was the American experience chart. But then we had... Uh, these actuaries in the United States and said this is too high and it's a very old chart. It comes from the last century. So, despite uh, the law prohibited it, uh, they did what they could. They had their CSO chart and it was lower. So the Mexican chart was an urgent one because that company was actually affecting the rest. Uh, so what follows, uh, we're going to leave the story now because uh, we're going to continue with some charts and then some uh, mortality rates of uh, American population f uh, by thousand to white people. And for them, uh, white people were paramount. And... Um, what is impressive of these charts, this in 1900, mortality from zero to one year old, which is the infant mortality, which is called, is 167. I don't know if you can see this well. Uh, well, nowadays, this is reduced to five, five or four or even three in developed countries uh, this is what we have four or five and then mexico is around six more or less uh, so, uh, just uh, imagine 176 
So which means is that indeed, uh, then, you know, uh, births were crushed. It was terrible, you know, up until uh, great uh, developers are right of, of hygiene and so on and so forth. This is the way we lowered the infant mortality. Um, it is impressive to see this. Still, in 1980, we are talking about 12, so and it is still high. And now it must be around five or four, or more or less. So mortality rates of population by age are these in here. And in here, we have uh, we start from 15 to 24 because. Uh, those are the charts uh, prepared by the Mexican Association of Insurance Companies that was uh, asked to Professor Jorge Rendon, uh, it, and he prepared them for men and women. So these are the background of the charts. And uh, uh, from the uh, you know, last ones are population charts. These are charts of uh, insurance lives because here we can see older we have one which is called northampton in uh, 1783 uh, which is a very high mortality of one zero to one in 1968 this as i used to tell you it was the one that we used still in mexico in 1970 in cornish is a company, a German company, in ZZO 41, we have already mentioned it. And then we have the Mexican experience, 62, 67. It starts out in, in 15 years old because the, we have very low numbers to have this chart. Actually, we're going to see how we did this. Now, uh, the Admesama 12,000 chart, the insurance company commission 2013 the canadian charge all these are for men the amish chart 2015 for men and then mortality chart that comes now is the uh, amish 2015 chart which is the most recent one in mexico uh, by uh, insurance companies not in population in population we have had some others that are more recent but this is the last one, or because when uh, COVID uh, came, we didn't have a chart. And we'll see what the effect was. We have some graphs of which is the difference of mortality between men and women. And uh, the one on top is for men, and the one on uh, the below is for women. I don't see colors, so please excuse me if I say colors are uh, wrong. As you see, differences are big between men and women. As I uh, tell my students, women live forever. There's no problem. So in uh, the... Um, chart of this, you know, this Amish chart that was uh, done in 20, 2015, 2010, 2015, were progressively made, feeling less important or less strong. This is for women, and this is the one for men, which is a little bit more complex, but there it goes. You know, uh, then uh, we have the mortality of uh, for pensions, uh, life pensions. So pensions... Uh, such as uh, as well as mortality charts should have a margin for deviations because now the deviation is calculated statistically uh, having also some uh, pension charts should have a margin but the pension margin was uh, the other way around because they looked or they wanted to calculate with a higher mortality than that was expected with, by, due to possible deviations. Then uh, these are the first charts built. The IMSS here in Mexico started having their uh, chart for pensions, actually. 
And if compared to the American tables, GAM, which is uh, uh, the United States chart, then uh, we can see, we get to conclude which would be the present cost of a cost of a person uh, aged 55, which was e greater uh, in GAM than in uh, Suruxiao. And more or less, uh, they are in the same uh, time. One is uh, from 94 and the other one is from 97. So the uh, social insurance a little bit is a little bit more adjusted at the GAMS and it used differently from men and women. And it's one of the charts that have, have helped the most the uh, social security to foresee how much their erogations will be uh, due to pension. And um, now we're going to see one more topic, which are the causes of death. And this Amish, as I told you, is the uh, American uh, Associ uh, Mexican Association of uh, Insurance Institutions and found that heart and cancer diseases, violent deaths, were the most frequent uh, diseases of mortality. And after this came... Uh, uh, some uh, charts from the United States that indeed, maybe they're not a wonder in statistics, but in uh, data. They have all sorts of data in the world, these people from the United States, you know. And, uh, and here we have a mortality by age from uh, 35 to 45, 40, 54 to 60. 474 to 84. And as you see, it's not the same all the time. From 35 to 44, accidents have an important role. But from 45 to 54, uh, heart uh, diseases and cancer are the ones that prevail. And from 55 to 64, it's the other way around. Cancer is more important than heart, and 65 to 74 also, and 74 to 85, 84 are almost the same from 75 to 84. And we do not have that one after 84, because after 84, cancer is worse than heart diseases. So what happens here? is that here in Mexico, unfortunately, we have not been able to have these ages because doctors are pretty smart here. When a person dies, they say that it's a heart failure. So that's pretty easy. But here we have some very important diseases and interesting diseases such as uh, liver disease, suicide, uh, uh, kidney diseases, septicemi, Alzheimer, etc. So those, you know, are the mortality causes. And this is for men. And for women, we have it is a little bit shorter. I don't know why they discriminated women in here. But this is one that I found. Well, it's more or less the same. You know, heart and cancer are the ones that, um, uh, you know, increase the number. And this is a parenthesis. Well, and as we stated a little while ago, one of the... Uh, uh, interesting parts that we can have through a mortality chart and only through this is to calculate the uh, life expectancy. Uh, so as we said, uh, the life expectancy in countries, it represents a little bit of welfare uh, together with other indicators. Uh, welfare uh, of people in different uh, countries. Uh, uh, indeed, it's something pretty important. It's an uh, age average, future age average that, uh, you know, people are going to live. And it may be calculated, as you see in this chart, or separated from men and women, 
you know, women live forever, and as I said, and that's okay. And after 20 years, you know, it's important to be aware of this because those, you know, those come from age zero, the first ones, and those, you know, those of age zero are lost a little bit because infant mortality in some cases is pretty high and that really uh, impacts. But the life expectancy to 20 years old, starting from 20 years old to calculate it, it's the way they are going to live up until 57 or 60, 63 years, women, 62. And the life expectancy of 65 gives an idea, you know, a certain idea, not as it says here, uh, my actuary uh, colleague, Mr. Carlos, it is uh, not used to calculate pensions, but they are used to see how through time uh, longevity has changed in people. So here we have uh, uh, from uh, year 2000, uh, this is from the insurance companies, you know, in year 2000, uh, mortality was around 15 more years that lived after 65 years old on average. So, after we had 1924 in five years, which is four years more that ha life has prolonged itself. Up until 2015, we have this data because then we had uh, the pandemic and those things, you know. Now, the life expectancy, as we said, is an important index for welfare and in order to measure part of welfare of the countries. Uh, and of course, you know, the uh, countries that have a greater life expectancy are uh, Sweden and Japan. Japan talks about 84 years of life expectancy as average, and uh, in Mexico we have 77 years old, 76 almost. Latin America, indeed, Costa Rica, and uh, well, you know. Uh, Chile also, but it's not in here. I have it in the other chart. Well, um, so these are the developed countries like uh, the English people, the United States, France, Spain, more or less, you know. So, so this is a life expectancy with the pandemic. What happens with the life expectancy in pandemic? times. Well, let's see Mexico. Mexico in 2019, their life experience was, expectancy was uh, 75 years uh, after birth. And uh, in COVID, it went down five years. So we lost uh, five days. It went to 70 years. So these charts come from UN. And we recovered 75 uh, years, but that doesn't mean that uh, we didn't have any problem. Because 75 in 2019 and then in 2022, three years later, it was the same figure. So it continued affecting with even without COVID. And mortality, the previous mortality after before COVID impacted us. So here we have Costa Rica with 81 years. They also recovered. Almost everyone recovered. But it's not a total recovery because they should have grown in this throes, those three years. And then we have Cuba, we have Honduras, Panama, Paraguay, El Salvador. Uruguay, Venezuela, United States, which is, it doesn't have uh, the greatest uh, indexes in life expectancy. They have uh, been worried uh, about knowing what happens, but, you know, uh, we better do not discuss about this. Well, they should res uh, solve this. They lost two years 
and then they recovered. In Japan, they didn't do not even a year. Uh, those Japanese people are marvelous, wonderful. Argentina, just like the other ones, and uh, Sweden uh, was a greater raid uh, after COVID. They were pretty careful, uh, you know, in this countries, they took care for themselves from the very beginning. That was, was, that was very important. In COVID, uh, they first talked about two years of laws in the United States. Well, no, no, it was much more indeed. It was a great impact in the life expectancy. That means that very many people, many more people than expected died. Then from here on, we have a mortality comparison by gender and age. In this blue or, or purple colored uh, uh, chart, arm is for women and men. We have these uh, mortality rates multiplied times a thousand. Conapo, which is the uh, government entity in charge of uh, preparing these mortality uh, graphs or charts. And uh, Conapo and Dinehi on a yearly basis prepare this. And uh, what we're comparing here is the mortality of uh, insurance uh, insurance lives uh, with um, the population, CONAPO. And the formula used by demographers to calculate, which is more important in general, is to think of a typical population uh, an invented population, but uh, uh, impacts both charts or graphs that are being compared, you know, the same uh, percentage of population to see how they die. And then we have uh, the theoretical deaths that, that there would be in the charts, like, for example, in Amos from uh, 15 to 19, their factor is 37. But if we want to know the whole chart, how great or uh, small the, the mortality is than population, then we have those that theoretically die, theoretically completely, with a typical population that would impact both at the same time. So below here, um, we calculate the death, theoretical deaths, from Amis to um, from Conapo and also uh, Amis. So we add up uh, death ones and it's divided uh, between the total number. So it happens that women live 50% more than in the insurance companies, those that buy insurance policies than the general population, because the general population, you know, there are all sorts of people. So the insurance companies, some uh, there is some sort of selection of them. So it's a 50% more according to these uh, graphs or charts. Uh, it's not forever. Uh, in women and men, it's a 60% more. You know, the deaths of population than the deaths of uh, insurance companies. Then we have a mortality graph of people that are uh, with disabilities completely and permanently. And we want to know what their mortality is because it is pretty important because uh, uh, generally there are government grants 
or from the insurance companies or social security, of course, for these people, you know. And they're pretty curious because uh, during the two f first uh, years, mortality is greater in younger ages than in older ages. Here we have 0.537 compared to 0.341 and 62, which would be the other way around. The normal uh, mortality rate, which is greater than, you know, 62 than 22. And what happens here is that uh, the two first years are uh, pretty impactful for the people that permanently uh, are uh, with disabilities or disabled permanently. So what we can see here with when Beethoven uh, became uh, deaf, he was going to commit suicide. He wanted to kill himself. Imagine he would have left us without the fifth or the ninth symphony. That would be that would be terrible, a sin. So young people have uh, this curious mortality, which is a great rate. Not because they be commit suicide, uh, but because probably they have a greater impact and they take less care of themselves. But, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, this is taken from the United States. And as I tell you, in the United States, we can find all the data that we want. So... They are paramount. These charts are paramount in order to know which are the which the costs due to uh, disability will be. So this is due to disability, but there are also mortality charts due to accidents, accident uh, deaths. So this the difference between men and women is impressive, especially in ages you know from sixteen to. 25 years old you know and the mortality of men is like three times greater than in women so that means that men are silly uh, and women live forever but indeed you know it's impressive to see the changes and these are also charts for women in the United States from 1996. And uh, uh, the truth of the matter is that percentages of one and the other are just amazing. Mortality like uh, age of 20 for women is 0.20. That is to say, uh, they die 0.2 out of every thousand women. So, out of 10,000 uh, two women die. And in men, it's 0. 0.64 uh, against 0. 0.20. So the the difference between uh, uh, 0. 0.20 and 0. 0.64, that's like 31% difference between men and women. Like three times. So we have to consider the fact that the United St in the United States, the young age mortality rate is pretty high. Young people, you know, go out of the houses, go to the university, and I don't know what happens there, you know. So it's even greater than in Mexico you know, younger people, mortality rate in the United States. You know, mortality of smokers, you know, if there is a smoker over here, please get rid of your uh, cigarette because that's the worst thing for health. There is no worse invention for health than the smoking. And if somebody gets mad, please... Sorry, but the truth of the matter is that I used to smoke a lot and I got cancer. So mortality also, in order to compare it, just like the other ones with a typical population, which is valid for those that smoke and those that do not smoke, these are also uh, charts from the United States. Here in Mexico, unhappily, we have an idea of mortality uh, 
uh, charts, but they, we do not get so far as to separate charts of uh, disabled people and so on and so forth, even though we are fighting on that, you know. So, in men, mortality of smokers is twice two times 19, 2.19 times the death of smokers. Smokers are uh, dying twice as uh, fast as non-smokers. So please do not smoke because, you know, that's a catastrophe. And that's in men. And in women is a little bit more serious than... Uh, those non-smokers, so so non-smokers are have less mortality than the smokers. In here, we have to go forward, no matter what. And finally, well, almost finally, because there's another chart. You know the mortality projections or prognosis. So I'm uh, getting uh, running out of time. Well, I'm about to finish. Well, uh, mortality projections, uh, you know, it's also made with the mortality uh, charts. This is the, this little symbol is life expectancy. It's 65. And this is the actual uh, current value of pensions. So uh, this indeed is something which is Don in Mexico, Conapo is performing this, and Inehi as well. Uh, and the prognosis and projection is more or less like this. And in this years, well, uh, he had grown uh, life expectancy a lot. This last graph is the graph that uh, gave me, uh, an engineer gave to me, which was uh, taking a look at all the uh, claims due to COVID deaths. This is the number of claims every week, per week. And the curve that we have, we can see here that there was a very high peak in 2020 by the end of 2020. When many people would say, well, now, you know, by October, November, the COVID was over. But was not true. It was when it was worse. So that's it on my side. So I am here uh, to your, uh, to, to answer any questions, if there are any. Professor, thank you very much for your intervention. All of these examples are actually going to give you give us an idea of how important it is in our countries and institutions to gather information. That information is going to leave us to give a accurate analysis as shown in the United States, but at many, many times in other countries we do not have all that quality of information, which uh, the first message that we should have uh, so that these institutions would have uh, strong information systems where we can gather information, have important conclusions, the audience, and I'm going to ask them to you. It has to do first with the uh, uh, updates of uh, charts. Some of them ask us that uh, charts by 2015 are the most uh, uh, current ones. If not, we should then have to update them. Maybe it would be recommendable to update these charts every five or 10 or 15 years. Well, then, actually, we were doing them every five years, but uh, the insurance companies' uh, charts. But in the case of population charts, they are doing on a yearly basis. They are doing them uh, every year. And they do it uh, on a yearly basis, but they, they can have the experience from several years. Like, for example, the chart of 2015, you know, they were taking from the 2010 to 2014. That was something like that. That was the experience. Because, you know, if we 
consider the charts of a single year, you know, there will be people that there there will be places that they will not be enough because we do not have enough number of people, so that it will give us a uh, adjust and adjust uh, ungraduated uh, uh, figure. You know, talking about COVID, Professor, they ask us if COVID does not come back or if we didn't have any other pandemic, then we could say that uh, the life experience uh, uh, expectancy from birth was stagnated or we should do anything in order to recover or have we already recovered? Well, what we stated was that the life expectancy decreased uh, in all countries. Uh, around five years. That was the impact on life expectancy. You know, people were going to be leave five years less due to COVID. And nevertheless, most of the people recovered one uh, year later. But uh, they came to the previous number. But that uh, is not what should be. You know, because in the past... Uh, they could have uh, grown a little bit and they didn't grow. They only recovered that. I think we are now there in a period of recovery of those that uh, passed away. Oh, you know, those that we had before COVID, but they haven't uh, had a greater life expectancy back then in the last years. And last, if you could uh, give us uh, the sources of information for live uh, projections. Well, the truth of the matter is that I took a CONAPO chart, which is the National Council of Population, that uh, they do their mortality chart together with INEGI, which is the Mexican Institution of uh, Statistics and Geography. And they have uh, done their projections. And there are many other charts, like, for example, uh, the pension charts. They really like to project them because mortality is slowly in order to change. But the other ones are not that uh, slow. So I took that information from the other actuaries that have already performed that work. And to our public, we will tell you that here we have Professor Nicolas Stark, Comptroller of the Inter-American Conference of Social Security, who wants to take the floor after this exposition. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for this space and for sharing knowledge that finally is the core of this conference. I uh, want to congratulate the uh, Secretary General and the team uh, for encouraging this kind of counters, which are the essence of what we have to do here, particularly if today we are facing a such a strong uh, aging process uh, that reaches all of us too, which is uh, social uh, security and Professor Brandon, uh, it seems to be, to me, all that you have mentioned pretty good, you know, you know, what, how complex mathematically speaking, you know, and I remember how relevant it has been in order to state uh, the importance that charts have. I want to tell you, Professor, that when uh, we started the pension system, I affiliated in 81, they told us that we had to gather uh, money to live 13.8 years after a retirement at 65. Now, when I knocked at the door at 65, they told me, uh, you know, it was not 13 point something years. It's 21.8 years, more years after retiring. And we are still uh, saving 10% in Chile. So this is what I wanted to to talk about. And, you know, rather than just talking about how to build a, a 
turn and so on and so forth. I wanted to mention how important economically and politically speaking uh, mortality uh, charts are. And if countries and their systems of social security do not have automated systems for the parametric change, it will give us an impact in the political discussion. And if me, all of a sudden, I am against a capitalization system, I don't like it, then I, I would uh, try to leave the chart alone and we would uh, continue applying the same uh, chart after 40 or 50 years. And then they would say, what a bad uh, payment I'm receiving after retirement. Because we started in 81 in Chile, and after 43 years old, uh, after 43 years of this pension system, we, we're still saving at 10% where the uh, interest rate is uh, going down. So every time it's more difficult to find instruments that would pay some interest. So to me, it seems pretty important to to hear what you said, and obviously to separate the work that requires building and updating this, you know. And secondly, how we should incorporate to the mechanics of updating parametric uh, updating of systems a frequency that would be uh, timely. You know, in Chile, we're now discussing the third try of reform. You know, Borch, uh, President Borch is uh, in the head of this. And I took a look at the low uh, draft, and the only thing they mentioned is that somehow, uh, sometime, an organ is going to suggest a revision of the charts. So we're going to have the same problem, because I know that uh, this is a political discussion topic. You know, somebody says, you know, this system does not work, and then I go to the church. So I would, uh, I just wanted to have that comment about the countries we are. Uh, we have to systematically review this charts because in a capitalization system, you tend to simplify pension formula, which is the accumulated or crude capital and the necessary unitary capital. So when this formula, when I have a fixed numerator, so what happens is that the pension goes down dramatically. So I and the allocation system is the same thing. In the allocation system, you know, the ones that win are the ones that are in the first uh, places of uh, the queue. So I, it's the permanent information that the conference talks about this topic which then we would uh, generate material so that we as a conference will be able to say, well, you know what, a model based on allocation will work uh, wrongly if we do not uh, work on this properly. And a capitalization system is going to work uh, badly if we, we do not consider the economic effects as well as some other things so that later the cost that we will have for future generation is what definitely we have to care for. How do we do so that every generation would pay what is fair and that they would be able to save for an individual or collective allocation of resources? But we do not have to do is, you know, the coming generations would have to play, pay. So we should not take the Greek uh, example. You know, so definitely several years ago we learned, you know, it happened in, in a, 10 years ago, an Italian professor came. I don't know if you remember of this professor where he would say the implicit debt has to be specified. We should calculate how much every country is generating, uh, generating of future debt so that resources will be enough. That's what I wanted to say. Well, yeah, the clearest example is France. In France, pension started at 62 years of age. And every time it was a heavier load for the country, 
uh, so that the president changed to 64 years old and uh, there were riots on and so forth. But why did he, did he have this change? Because he saw the mortality rate so that he wouldn't uh, change this. Uh, the country was going to explode. So you are completely right. We have to foresee all those things because otherwise in Mexico, we, we have a social security in 1946, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 43, sir. In 1943. And uh, we foresaw uh, the growth of uh, life expectancy, but not enough as for today. So this is why they say that the a social security uh, institution has a deficit because they didn't update their mortality charts. Thank you very much, Professor Rendon and Professor Stark. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. We're going to finish today's session with a message by Professor Luis Alberto Martinez Martinez, who's with us remotely from Panama City. He's the head of the American Commission of Factoria and fin Financing. And with this message, we'll end up our session. Professor Martinez, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank the actuary, uh, Jorge Rendon. I had the opportunity to meet Alejandro Asas as uh, well as actuary Rendon. Maybe you do not remember, but back then I visited you when you were, uh, when I was doing my thesis work in the uh, Anahuac University in Wisconsin, and I had a little bit the chance to talk to you with, uh, I visited uh, Actuario Azas and Actuario Rendon 25 years ago. You know, I had that experience, marvelous experience to meet both of them. And so many people you have met and many students that have gone through your classrooms maybe you do not remember me but i do remember you and i have beautiful memories from those days thanks also to all the participants on behalf of the american commissions of actuary and financing and the inter-american uh, conference of social security you know as the comptroller mentioned uh, this is a fundamental part, uh, mainly on those actors that work in social security and the pension issues, because this this is the instrument that we use, the technical and uh, demographic and actuary basis that we use to project future uh, payments that will be given to every right holders. So I wish you all a happy afternoon and thank you for your participation again in this important seminar, permanent seminar from the Inter-American Conference on Social Security. Thank you very much. So we uh, will then close our meeting. Thank you very much, Professor Luis. A good afternoon for everyone. Thank you very much for being here with us.